Why did I not accept my offers from other schools? Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to Vlogmas Day 18. Today's video is just going to be a little bit different. I did film one of these last year in Vlogmas where I just sit down and I just talk to you guys. So I thought I should film one this year. I received a comment earlier at the beginning of Vlogmas to kind of talk about my experience at U of T so far because I've never actually spoken about it. I only told you guys about days of my life, my acceptances and stuff like that, but I never actually told you guys about my experience. So I thought it would be kind of useful especially for those of you who are like applying for college right now and also just like if you've received decisions yet i'm not so sure if you guys have but if you want something to kind of help you make your decision i hope this helps you out so i just finished my first semester at u of t obviously this whole thing was kind of different in comparison to many people mainly because i had to do the whole thing online and also i had to do it 13,000 kilometers away overall i'd say the experience was not as bad as i thought it was going to be if you're watching this video then you obviously know that there's no secret that ufc does have a reputation of people like either dropping out or like low mental health because of like the rigor and the competitiveness and that is no secret that has been like really prevalent to me but I kind of just like overestimated how much I was going to suffer when I went into it which I feel like was a good thing like a blessing in disguise because I kind of mentally prepared myself for something that I never got of course there were times where I was just sitting and thinking to myself why did I not accept my offers from other schools because obviously it is a hard school I'm not trying to say that this um, that U of T is easy at by any means you could say that the difficulty varies between courses but I feel like no matter what course you take you're gonna always be challenged it's gonna be difficult but it's a, a good challenge that'll help you and when you like persevere it feels worth it coming in to the year I feel like my first semester first year experience is obviously gonna be different in comparison to people from last year's since mine was online if I talk to a lot of my friends who are also in first year I feel like their take on this might be very different from mine because I personally try my best to make the most of the whole online situation rather than dreading it because it's very uncertain on when we're ever going to meet each other in person, whether or not most of us are going to fly over there. So I really try my best to make the most out of everything. If God forbid this um, continues next year for upcoming freshmen and they have to do everything online from like many distances, my advice to you is to make the most of it all. I really tried to make the most out of Frosh. I made sure to go to every single event. I made sure to interact with as many people as I could regardless of what year they were. I made friends with seniors at U of T, with juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. I've made friends from different years and that can be so beneficial to you. They can help you out with your class selection. If you want to drop out of a class, they'll like tell you what is better for you. They're also just genuinely really fun people in upper years too. And also you can get help with like your schoolwork, which I mean, in an academically honest way, <laughs> is very helpful. Being online was more of like a benefit to me, I like to say, because it made me put myself out there more because I kind of just like forced myself to talk to more people because if I didn't, I had this mindset that if I didn't try to reach out to people, then by the time I eventually end up going, everyone who, who's already there is gonna be friends with each other. And I didn't really establish a group of friends that I would come to and I would have to try Try and fit myself into pre-established groups which is really really hard so no matter what your circumstances are whether you're in person whether you're online whilst everybody is new whilst everybody's looking for friends this is the time for you to reach out and find people because it's more difficult to try and insert yourself into a well-established friendship group rather than inserting yourself into people who are just getting to know each other. With that being said, I did do a lot of things to try and make friends as well. So again, as I mentioned before, I try to make friends through Frosh Week and also just going to just random online events. Like my college is Woodsworth College and they had like movie nights here and there, even though I had to wake up at like 4 a.m. to watch the movie. I still went and I tried to make friends with people. I joined a sorority and I made so many of my close friends in that sorority, all different ages. They're like seniors to freshmen, like 
I made lots of friends through that. I joined um, Wix, which is Women in Computer Science. I made friends from that as well. And also, I just DM people <laughs> randomly on Instagram. When you get accepted, check out Instagram and Facebook for your classes, your incoming classes, Instagram and Facebook pages. So ours was called U of T Class 2024, something like that. I have no idea what the username was. But um, on there, you just DM the page your pictures and just write a little bio. Loki felt like Tinder, even though I've never used Tinder. But you're basically just introducing yourself and people comment on your picture, especially if you have common interests or if you just find people that you think are interesting, all you do is like you just click on their profile, follow them and just write a little DM being like, hey, I saw your post on the Instagram page. You seem really cool. So I just wanted to say hi. I did that to so many people or I would even just leave a comment on someone's post and then they would DM me because my comment was interesting. And that was one way that I made a bunch of acquaintances and then a lot of those acquaintances transferred to friends. Now I feel like we should talk about the thing that most of you are probably wanting to know and it is about like workload, difficulty, should you just like choose to go to another school instead of coming to U of T if you don't wanna experience difficulty. When I was choosing my college acceptances, I was torn between three schools. I was torn between U of T, Ryerson, and UBC. There were a lot of things that I had to take into consideration, which I don't think I really mentioned in my college acceptance video, but I ruled out UBC because I got accepted into film, but I did not get accepted into sciences, which is what I was thinking of pursuing first. So I dropped that one. Then I had to choose between um, U of T and Ryerson. And what made me choose U of T, if I'm going to be completely honest, I was just thinking about if I had a degree with which university name, which one would make, make me get taken a bit more seriously. I don't know. It's because I got emerged into a whole cycle of Reddit and a bunch of articles. And a point that was brought up by one of these articles that stuck out to me, it wasn't on Reddit or anything. It was like a properly written article. I'm sure if you like Google, like... Should I choose between Ryerson or U of T? Because that's a really common choice. The point that was made was, if you accept U of T, you can always um, drop out of U of T and transfer to Ryerson. But they said it might be harder for you to transfer from Ryerson to U of T. That is why I chose U of T. That was the mentality I went with. And then also, it also just depends on your program. I know computer science is more competitive at U of T than it is Ryerson. Obviously, like at U of T, arts side at St. George, you aren't actually accepted in into your major until second year, but if you chose to go to Ryerson, you're already in, from my understanding. If I accepted my offer to Ryerson, I would have been already in um, computer science honors. Right now at U of T, I'm in arts and science, math and physical science, and I'm trying to get into computer science. So that's one of like the downfalls that I feel like you should take into account. Please take what people say about a course being a bird course, take that with a grain of salt. Every single post, that I saw, every single YouTube video that I saw, every single person that told me that specific courses were bird courses were the most difficult courses I had taken this year. So I would not take a course just because somebody says it is easy. Take a course because you think it is interesting. U of D has really interesting courses that I didn't even know about. Like I saw one of my friends posted on her private story, her class lineup for next semester. The most interesting classes I've ever seen. You really just need to look in depth. Don't take like the basic courses, especially if you don't need them. If you're going into a competitive program, have substitute um, majors, specialists, and stuff like that that you would want to get into in case you don't get into the course that you want to. So obviously now I need to start thinking about that because I am going to start um, applying for what I want to do for post. So that stands for program of study. And if I don't get into computer science, I need to have an alternative of what I want to do if that doesn't happen. And you need to make sure you kind of have that established either at the beginning of semester one or like the beginning of semester two so that you make sure you take the required courses that allow you to get into that post. So I'm lucky that all the courses that I am taking now and as well as the transfer credits that I got from taking the IB and like getting my credits from higher level, I can do computer science, I can get into cognitive science, and I can also get into economics. <laughs> so then if I don't wanna do either of those, 
and I decided to take summer school that I can try to get into actuarial sciences. Those are like three other alternatives that I could do if I don't make it into the computer science program. So just make sure you have something ready in case you don't make it into your post. So my final thoughts of my first semester at U of T. Do I regret choosing to go to U of T? No, but that is mainly because I didn't experience as much of like the stress that most people did experience because I was very disciplined in terms of my time management. That is a key thing that I need you guys to take from this video is just make sure you manage your time appropriately. And I'm saying this point at the end of the video because those of you who made it to the end of the video are ones who truly want to consider U of T as like a choice that you want to go to. That's the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. That is the one thing I want you to take away from this video. You choosing to go to U of T, make sure you have great time management skills and make sure you're just always like disciplined. You know when to say no to people so that you don't fall behind in your studies because at the end of it all, friends and stuff are cool, but your friends could be passing and you could be failing. So you need to make sure that you prioritize yourself first. Prioritize your mental health first, prioritize your academics next, and then you can prioritize your friends. That is just the biggest takeaway. So if you made it all the way to the end, thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you kind of figure out what you want to do with your decision in going to U of T. And if you do, I really hope you enjoy it. Please try and involve yourself in the community. Whether you're online or in person, it's definitely good to put yourself out there. Thanks for watching. I love you all so much and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. Bye.